For our project, we posted a survey to various Goucher Facebook pages in an effort to better understand how people choose their careers. We received 61 responses to the survey, and of these, 42 were female, 14 were male, and 5 fell into the category of other. Only 52% of total survey respondents said they were aware of gender harassment in the career they are pursuing. When broken down by gender, 52% of women respondents and 80% of non-binary slash other individuals said they were aware of gendered harassment in their field. Male respondents said they were aware only 43% of the time. Interestingly, two men pursuing psychology wrote that they were aware of historical marginalization and that there was a history of issues, but that in the present day they felt this no longer existed. Others felt that they were unqualified to say. Another interesting point was that women dancers noted that their male counterparts were likely to be harassed. For example, male dancers are accused of being girly by other men. This is a case of both shaming and self-policing, as men are questioning another man's masculinity for his interest in a stereotypically feminine career. This was best put by another respondent, who stated that men being dancers is still a foreign concept to some. Other respondents stated they expected no harassment because their field was female-dominated. Other women said they were unaware of any problems, but were sure there is some or that they can expect harassment. Despite all this, only 37% of respondents said that their gender identity impacted what career they chose to pursue. What state did you grow up in? Well, I didn't grow up in the United States because I was born in Azerbaijan, a Sungai city. Pennsylvania? Uh, I grew up right outside of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Maryland. Growing up, what career did you want to pursue? Well, I, growing up and I still, I have no idea of what career do I want to pursue because I'm interested in so many fields. Um, I used to say when I was little that I wanted to be a pediatrician. <laughs> I don't know if I knew what that even meant. And then after that, I wanted to be a teacher. I'm not really sure. Uh, we used to kind of change depending on the season. Good. When I was really little, I wanted to be a firefighter on the space station. Are you aware of any gendered harassment in your field? If so, what kind, and is it common? So there's a possibility of me studying law at some point of my life, uh, or something in politics. I don't know. Um, I'm majoring in computer science, so mm -hmm. somewhere in that field, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to become a wildlife research biologist. What career are you pursuing now? Uh, I didn't really have my parents eye on me much, so I didn't have any career that they wanted me to pursue. But I had certain people told me to do being a become a dentist, which they, the reason they said was mm -hmm. because there's a lot of money in it. Um, my parents didn't really encourage any career. My grandpa was really in, and still is really determined that I should be a doctor. Has your gender identity impacted what career you are pursuing? Oh, I know from the both sides. There's a, a lot of heteros, uh, heterosexual uh, males that usually see the ladies as a female, identify people as prey. Unfortunately, they are disgusting assholes. I'm sorry for my language. But also, there are also certain uh, females, heterosexuals, they, uh, they really cannot control themselves and they do the same thing. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's this uh, stigma that only male is the perpetrator, the uh, predator. But it actually works both ways. It's just the numbers just change. What career were you encouraged by your parents to pursue? Uh, not at all, because I just don't think so. The gender and the career matters. I leaned into science <laughs> or like science heavy subjects. Out of spite, somewhere. <laughs> like, yeah, you won't keep me from this. Um, I like to think not, but I'm sure it has in some ways, I guess. I don't think so. Um, like, I, did, I was not aware of uh, like gender bias until I had like was pretty sure what I wanted to do already. What gender do you identify as? For the 90, actually 80 percent, I identify as heterosexual, but also I have certain questions in my mind that I'm trying to figure out. Um, cis female. Um, I'm like a man. Male. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Uh, I'm a cis female. The top jobs for women overall are being teachers, speech pathologists, dental hygienists, secretary assistants, 
and child care workers. For most of these jobs, you have to have a college degree. Top jobs for males is mainly hard labor and physical work. Also in women's shares in male-dominated jobs, the highest is transportation and utilities, where women make up 23.5%, and the lowest percentage was 3.2% for logging. It was also interesting that in construction industries, women make up 9.1% of the construction workers in the U.S. The reason why some fields are female-dominated and others are not may be due to stereotypes about women. Women are supposed to be polite, accommodating, nurturing, for example, taking care of children, and know how to cook. and know how to clean. The news has recently been buzzing with reports of sexual misconduct and assault by high-profile individuals such as Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer, and Roy Moore. Most have been fired or are under pressure to leave their position. This is a significant change from the rest of history, where perpetrators went unpunished. It is important to understand why reports of assault or misconduct are so often not taken seriously. There is a culture of silence about assault, especially on the part of men. John Stewart, in a recent interview about Louis C.K., talked about not wanting to believe that someone you know would do something like that. Like that, in this case, is masturbating in front of female co-workers. Because women and other groups that are common targets for harassment are given less power and influence in social situations, it is easier to disregard or outright deny the victim's experience rather than accuse the harasser. In addition to that, if victims don't get support from their manager or supervisor, which are statistically more likely to be male, victims feel like they are the ones who have to change their behavior because their harasser isn't changing and no action is being taken to stop them. This all means that cases of sexual or gender-based harassment often go unreported. The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, in a report from June 2016, said that anywhere between 25 and 85 percent of women experience workplace harassment, and that roughly three of four persons who experienced harassment never reported the event to their supervisor. Solutions. Unionized industries tend to experience lower rates of wage discrimination, and as a bonus, Unions tend to be good for entire industries. In addition to that, providing in the budget enough funds for government organizations like the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to handle the volume of reports they receive would help to hold businesses and employees accountable. Clearly define on paper what harassment is and have employees understand what these categories are. Written clearly stating that crude jokes, unwanted physical interaction, etc. hold the person accountable for the harassment. For example, they can be fired or sued.